Are you serious? Hello, welcome to How to Kill an Hour. There's plenty of ways to kill some time out there. You are about to kill some time with us. Today, I am joined by a big friend of the show, co-presenter Dev. What's going on, bro? Hello. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing's going on. Such a loaded question nowadays, isn't it? What is going on? Yeah, what the fuck? Can can I just... I want to say a sentence, Dev, and I'm just going to say it objectively so that when we listen back to this episode, we can just realise how batshit crazy the world is right now. Right? There is... Whether you believe the conspiracy theories or not, a virus that we do not have a cure for spreading across the world. Yep. The president of the United States contracted the virus. The free world. The free world. The president of the United States contracted this virus. And you're meant to stay indoors when you have the virus because we don't know how you catch it. We are not 100% sure how it is transmitted. Instead, he walked around and met people and went on tour. Yeah. A little, little bit of a tour. It's pretty nuts, man. I don't know if you saw the clip that circulating this morning is apparently of Trump struggling to breathe. But I did see that. Here's what you got to be careful of is, I mean, we live in an age now of spin, editing, a lot of things being taken out of context. But all we know, he might have just climbed a flight of stairs and been told to stand at the top and take some pictures. We didn't see what happened before. Yeah, but that man. clip used out of context after he's been diagnosed with uh, coronavirus, it makes it look a lot worse than it is. He's also, exactly. let's, not, let's not ignore the obvious fact that he's a like, very out of shape person. So walking to the top of some stairs, even like a flight of stairs is probably going to mm. make him be a bit out of breath. And I'm also not, not very young. By the way, I'm just trying <laughs> I don't know if this guy's coming across. And another thing, you guys are way too harsh on him, okay? He's got some good <laughs> ideas. <laughs> I mean, yeah, grabbing somebody by the pussy is out of order. We yeah, will but... grab some- with somebody by the pussy. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Um, but yeah, Dev, this is part of the celebration of the, our, our podcast, British Podcast Award win, bruv. We took Huge. home some, some metal a trophy of sorts. It was done online because of the coronavirus. But yeah, this is the continuation of our 100th episode, which I said when we got to our 100 episodes a few years back, we'll park up the 100th episode and do something special with it. So we did episode 99, then episode 101. And now a few years down the line, now we've got some silverware in the cabinet. I said, hey, right, let's highlight our biggest presenters on the show over the last few years and go through some of the more exciting times. And I'll be honest, Dev, there was a lot of clips that we found (laughs) <laughs> from the episodes that you've been in with us over the last few years, bro. I've forgotten about most of the things that I would have brought up on the show, just because it's unlike whenever I do any other kind of, what do you want to call it, recording or broadcast, is I'm not overly thinking about, I'm not overthinking what I'm saying. I'm just talking like I would do amongst friends. Uh, just to go back to the award cer- ceremony being online, because of the uh, pandemic. I actually think that was probably a good idea. Can you imagine if all of us were sat at a table at an award show and then found out that we won? (laughs) It would have been an absolute horror show. Maybe even worse, what if we'd have lost? Uh, Not even got a mention. Our combined... If you look at the statistics when you look at our behavior, when we're out and about, cause I've been out with each and one, each, uh, yeah, all of you separately. If I did, if I was to be a gambling man, right. If all of us were in the room and consuming table wine, cause that is the drink of choice when you're at award yeah. ceremonies, I've got good money on say, on thinking that, yeah, one of us would do something absolutely ridiculous. It could either, it could either be a small faux pas that turns into something big. Like one of us could trip over a little bit, then fall into a table and the table goes over and everyone hears it. Or it could be vomiting on the dance floor. Yeah, I think that's where I'd, it would start. I'd, I'd be really worried that, say, we'd go to something like that with high hopes that we might, oh, like maybe this, is, this, could be, this could be our night, lads. Like we could walk away <laughs> with an award and then we don't. I might internalize that and it will all of a sudden become a representation of all the failures in my life. And I'll end up flipping tables in front of some very influential people in the podcast podcast industry. So I think win win that yeah, situation. Man. It was good. And plus I could just not worry about having to get home in a ropey Uber right now. <laughs> yeah. Cause bruv, I, I I could drink all I wanted at home. It was it was it was a great it was a great yeah. thing, man. No, that was um, 
yeah, before we get into your clips, I mean, how have you been killing time recently, Dev? I'm going to ask you like I don't know, bruv. Like, like we ain't got a little script here somewhere uh, well, talking about what we've been up to. I'm glad you asked, Marcus. Uh, oh, thank we you. Had a, we had a chat a couple of weeks ago. Streaming is something that I really wanted to get into on, on Twitch and other platforms. And not streaming computer games, which I had thought of originally, but I can't play computer games and talk at the same time. I can't be entertaining and also play computer games. And the, the, I think the two people who thrive through that medium is either you're really, really good at a game and people like to watch you because you're high level. That's not me. Uh, or they watch you because you're very engaging, very entertaining. Mimi, for example, uh, he is like good at computer games, but also really, really entertaining to watch, can go off on monologues. And I'm, I don't have the ability to do that. So I wanted to stream something that I do feel confident and quite strong in, and that is music. So for the last couple of weeks, I've just been testing out the odd setup. Uh, one of the things I realized really quickly was that my laptop's not powerful enough to run Ableton, which is my uh, door of choice, and also Twitch Studio and have it all run smoothly. It was all a bit... Eh, 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 eh. So uh, the good folks over at Alienware Hooked your boy up with one of the sickest laptops I've ever had the pleasure of using. I mean, start off, aesthetically, it looks beautiful. You know, keyboard lights up. Um, it's like a brilliant uh, display. But the power, the power is where I was really impressed. So my Mac, my trusty Mac, which I've, I've only ever made music on, runs at 16 gig of RAM, which is a beast. 16 gig of RAM is a beast. This new Alienware one I got is 32 <laughs> fucking gig of RAM. It's like <laughs> it can't do stuff quick enough. So, what do you want? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? I'll do it. I'll do it. Give me, give me some more. Give me some more. It kind of reminds me of, is it, is it Prometheus who was punished by the gods to hold up the universe <laughs> forever? Like, <laughs> or Atlas. I forget which one, but my... My Alienware laptop is a Greek god holding up the universe on its shoulders like, I can take it! Uh, so since, so I've been, since I've been doing that, uh, it's all been running smoothly. Although, I did run into a little bit of a snag, and maybe this will help you if you're also getting into uh, streaming. You can't just plug a HDMI cable into the back of your laptop and then go into your Mac to run... And stream off it like that. You can't do that. What's what's the what's the thing that I needed, Marcus? There's one little bit of I call it Elgato, but I think it's yes. like Elgato. Elgato. El Ga- El Ga- Elgato. Elgato. An Elgato card, which basically means you can put a HDMI in there and then it will send that uh video out to anywhere uh, you want to plug it into. But that is the one thing that I'm missing at the moment. But as soon as it's up and running, or rather as soon as I buy that, uh well I actually have bought an El Gato. But in my haste to <laughs> I love get a story. deal, yeah. instead of the regular shopping outlets you could go, I was searching for well I was trying to get a bargain because they're about 180 quid. And I did see one website that offered them for about 150 quid. And I thought I'm gonna snag myself a bargain here. And oh look it's a reputable website because it's Tesco. It says Tesco buy. That must be like their whole online store and it was only after until you know entered in all, all my information click confirm pay the money that i realized it's not tesco buy at all it's actually i'm just showing marcus here on the camera it's not tesco <laughs> buy it's a company called teco buy teco buy very even the logo quite similar to tesco's but not tesco's it's called teco buy so now i've either Purchased an Elgato card and I now have to wait five to seven working days or I've got completely ripped off by a fake online company. I don't know which, but either one, as soon as it's set up, I'll be streaming several times a week live from my studio. We'll be making beats, we'll be doing challenges, and I'll basically just be getting better at making music and hopefully helping some people along the way. If Teco buy, don't rip your boy up. Dev, have you got access to just like a Google search window at the moment? Yeah. Because I typed in, is Teco buy into Google, right? And autocomplete gave me a quite an interesting kick. I want to see what you got when you when you type it in. Is Teco buy? <sighs> okay, so I'm on Trustpilot. 
But when you searched in Google, when I typed the word is Teco by it, the first thing that came up is, is Teco by legit? <laughs> and second is, is Teco by reliable? That's what came up in the autocomplete. Uh, there's so <laughs> many bad reviews. <laughs> so many bad reviews. I ordered my phone a month ago, still haven't received it. Sold Teco by four of my Samsung Galaxies. Arrived faulty. Poor delivery time. Ordered a new phone. It took almost two weeks. Oh, there's pages and pages of this. <laughs> the company's based in Hong Kong. Oh, that's taking a long time to get to you, boy. It's going to take a while to get to you, Dev. That's mad. But you got look, but look for streamers. If you want to get going with streaming, Dev's got a good point here. Though you need to get your kit right and you need to get it sorted. So get your streaming card, your Elgato card, which will take any HDMI input, which is going to be good for you, Dev, because you might stream different things over the next few months or so, and puts everything that's in that HDMI input into your laptop, and then you can combine it with webcams, etc. Afterwards, so I look forward to that. And just to confirm, Dev, your stream isn't going to be like what a lot of people do, which is just gaming and talking. You're going to be producing actual beats. How are you going to make that like something that you don't get lost in so you can talk to people? Because that's a bit of a challenge because I presume in the studio, hours can just go by, right? Yeah. So the idea with the streams is they're going to be, uh, they're going to be about two hours long. Yeah. Uh, and the idea is that we're going to finish a song, beginning, middle, end, uh, because it would be incredibly boring to just sit in a, to sit in the studio and watch me make beats for eight hours like I would normally do, I think would be really boring. But how I'm going to keep the streams exciting is they're going to be concise. There's going to be a challenge set at the start. So it might be genre based or it might be recreating a certain style or type of tune that I'm really into. And I will talk people through what I'm doing. It's one of the most helpful things I've had uh, when I'm in the studio with other people is learning their process and their sort of workflow. Um, uh, you know, for example, uh, uh, there's a, a producer that I've worked with a bunch of times who showed me tricks on how to use limiters and compressors properly and how to sort of mix and master as you're going along. So by, by the time you get to the ending stage of your song, you're not like, oh, it sounds all right, but I could do with a decent mix. It's sort of sounding pretty much how you want it to. Uh, but I think it's also going to go both ways as well as me wanting to teach people uh, how to make beats or to try and, you know, get a little bit of an audience who are interested in this uh, side of my life. I also want people to teach me things and suggest, oh, you know, if you use this plugin or, oh, why don't you try out this technique? So what I'm hoping is to create a community of producers and people who are interested in making music, not just, you know, me making wacky beats and making silly faces into the camera. I'm not saying there won't be any of that, but it's not just going to be that. Yeah, it is Twitch. So I would love you to make some serious beats, but I wouldn't mind you doing like a score to a, I don't know, a, a comedy sitcom or yeah, doing well, like that's that's a really that's a really good idea. In, in fact, it's, it's funny you mention that because I during my peak border, uh, boredom during lockdown, uh, I made a beat out of the Bill theme song. Sick. So I was just messing around. Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da amazing theme song. I was like, I want to make a little funky house beat or something out of it. And I thought, oh, if, you know what? If I filmed this whole process, the getting excited about the sample, the finding which bits to use, making a beat out of it, I also get really excited and really hyped up because it's something I, I really enjoy and I'm really passionate about. So um, I thought I should have just filmed this whole thing and, and put it out as a video. And then I thought, well, why don't I just start, every time I go to the studio, just start streaming what I'm doing in there anyway. Defo, man, it will look real good. And obviously you can use that Alienware computer as well to uh, chop up some L clippage and yeah. edit that as well. Because obviously when, once you've done your video stuff, you're going to have to tear through those files and pull clips out of it, man. So yeah, once again, thanks to the guys at Alienware for hooking us up. We got Alienware. You gave me an yeah. absolute beast of a laptop, which does everything I need to and more. So thank you very much. Yeah, man. I want to see what it looks like as well, because I didn't get to have a look at what model it was, but I think it's um it's uh, it's one that they always look a bit like they've got cool green light. Is it got green lights on it or yeah, multicolored yeah. stuff? Yeah, it's got multicolored it? lights on it. You can change the lighting scheme and stuff on it as well. The battery power, uh, battery time is really good. And I haven't tried playing computer games on it at the moment, but just even the graphics look super crisp. But for me, the 
big, big thing was how much RAM there is. I've not struggled that much with 16 gig of RAM on my Mac. The Alienware one is, is, is it's an absolute beast. That's sick, man. And also the fact that you've got a computer where you're doing your producing and then a computer where the streaming's at, it's just going to make it less messy when you're setting up. Yeah, well. precisely. So when I go to do the video editing and stuff like that and start putting stuff up on YouTube, I probably would opt for the Alienware laptop over that just because, I mean, you know, editing and rendering and stuff takes forever. I think... Yeah, yeah, yeah man. The- I, look, I look forward to seeing your, your your Twitch journey, man, because like they kind of launched this just chatting section... Um, it's and the biggest. Like, it's one of the biggest channels that they have on there. It's enormous because it's just people having a chat or kind of doing things like making stuff. Another guy who's friends with Limmy, actually, a guy that came on the show a few episodes back, uh, Bilal Zafar. Um, yeah, like he's just threw himself at it with a Pez playing Pez from fifteen years ago, I think it was, and now he's got his own kind of football team, his own merch. He rumor on the roads he's going to be hooking up with some well-known football brands to create content moving forward. So yeah, I think Twitch is definitely something that has blown up during lockdown i look forward to seeing what you put out there mate but anyway dev enough of the nice it's time for us to get stuck into some things that you have discussed on the show over the years i mean dev i'm not joking when i said there were so many frigging clips i'll tell you what we're not going to talk about we're not going to talk about dev's trip to japan yeah because that was a very fun clip that we had we spoke about dev's trip to japan i'm going to put the link to that in the show description right what we're not going to talk about they should have that on the Japan tourist board. <laughs> when you go to the Japan tourist board website, there should be a video of me talking about my trip to a, an S&M club in Tokyo. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. What we're not going to talk about is, is dating mums, which is something Dev got into. And also what we're not going to talk about point is... Out, I haven't actually dated someone's mum. I just Allegedly. I think we were just talking about the... the I mean, no, that's a lie. I have dated people who are mums, but I haven't dated someone's mum. That makes sense. It, what Dev's trying to say, he hasn't dated your mum. Yeah. You listening dating, right now. He's not dating your mum. If you're listening, I probably haven't done anything with your mum. There you go. Uh, there you go. Nice. Uh, and also fighting girlfriends or girlfriends that can beat you up. We spoke about as well. And beating your friends up as well. But what we um, are going to talk about, Dev, is your trip to Ibiza, where you were very hydrated and uh, yeah, Too something very interesting happened. This is from episode 167 called Piss Bottle. This is not a sex story, man. I'll is it not you. a sex story? It's not a sex story. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, it should have been, but it's uh, not a sex story, man. Okay. So, um, what is it about them, do you, me, do you want to just tell I'm it? really curious. All right. So, last year I beef, all right? I did it big, bro. I did it big i was supposed to only go well i don't know considering the amount of time i was out there i was supposed to go for like four days or something i ended up like staying out there for like 10 i uh, moved hotels like a bunch of times i didn't plan anything so i was just moving around some places i stayed with nice some places i stayed with shitholes Shit. going out every yeah. single night that it's, it's the thing i love most about ib is any given night more or less any club that you go to superstar lineup your favourite DJs are going to be playing every single night of the week, right? So I'd already had a fantastic innings. This is part of my extended trip now. Oh, no, no, this was the night before I went into my extended trip. Yeah. So I'd gone out to Amnesia. Amnesia on the lineup, right? It's like Tuchamon, Red Light, Shadow Child, all on the same, all in the same room. I can't believe it, right? Maybe gets to about three or four in the morning and I am fucking, I'm, I'm involved, mate. I am fully involved. And I'm, I'm dancing with this one girl and her friends. I was dancing with this girl, whatever. And we're like chatting, chatting. I'm, <laughs> I'm talking all kind of shit to this girl like that. Oh, God, so beautiful. <laughs> I was guessing her. Just, oh, you're so beautiful. <laughs> The lovely girl, do you know what I mean? But I was just being so over the top. Oh, it's so beautiful. So uh they were leaving and they said to me, Oh, do you wanna do you wanna come back with us? So I'm like, Yeah, all right, cool. Not even thinking. And remembering it now, I don't fully recollect leaving the club and getting on what I now know as the IB for party bus. Okay, I thought we were gonna get a cab or some something. Well, we get out 
at this club. And, and next from when I sort of come to and sober up and realise what's going on, I'm on a bus, right? <laughs> I'm on a ram bus flying down the motorway at like four or five o'clock in the morning. The bus is full of people in the exact same state that I'm in. Now, I have to stand up because the bus is so packed and this girl that I've been talking to, I'm with her, <laughs> sorry, I'm with her and her friends and we're just talking all of a sudden and people who've had nights out like this will know exactly what this feels like. Okay, all of a sudden, I'm like, I have to piss now, okay? Not in five minutes, not in 30 seconds. I have to piss right now. Now, either I'm going to piss myself or I'm going to whip it out and piss on everybody, okay? This is not staying in me. I'm, like, holding in. I, I, I'm holding in, like, the fucking English channel right now. This needs to come out. So I look up at the guy and I'm like, i got to piss right now. So she says to me, hey, you, you can piss in this. So she holds up uh this bottle of water now this is a, like a uh, beef a bottle of water you know them like mini mini little it would still probably cost you like 12 euros but this is a tiny little bottle it's like when you get liquor in the airplane yeah when you're flying <laughs> it's smaller <laughs> it's, than that yeah it's a little bit bigger than that but anyway so those of you who've never pissed in a bottle before right let me just explain to you some of the mechanics that are involved you can't put your dick all the way inside the bottle because there needs to be room for air to come back out again. It's a transfer of energy, right? There's energy going in, it needs to come back out again. Uh, so you need to leave a little gap. Now, I can't fit the helmet all the way in this little bottle of water, right? But I need to make a gap. So what I need to do is hold my dick outside of the bottle, aim it the, the stream into the fucking mouth of this little bottle, right? I need to do that one-handed without anybody noticing me whilst I'm like nine beers deep. <laughs> <laughs> so I go for it, okay? I go for it. And the first sound I hear is the sound of my piss hitting the bottom of, 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 the, of the bowl. So I'm like, yes, I fucking got this. And you fully committed now, okay? That's it. You've pi you started pissing. You're not all of a sudden going to go, okay, I've changed my mind. No, 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 no. That's it. You are now going to carry on pissing until it's all finished, all right? So the girl standing in front of me, she's sort of giving me a bit of cover. It's a packed bus. People are kind of chatting, having their own conversations. Like, it's kind of cool. Then all of a sudden, Marcus, we hit a little bump in the road, a little <sighs> swerve, a little... <sighs> <laughs> and what happened, bro? Now, my thumb instinctively goes to clamp over my uh, the, my japs eye, right? Sticking the tip goes to close that. Now, if you've ever, in the summer, like, held a hose, <laughs> you've ever held a hose, and you try and put your thumb over it, all it does is intensify the stream, and in most cases, sends it off in a direction that you can't control. So that's exactly what happened. I sprayed, like, six people with piss. So you took. So you <laughs> spray like six people with piss. So you turn <laughs> your your piss stream yeah. into a water jet. Yeah, and it like hits people's soaker. legs, and immediately a couple of people turn around because you know you feel the sensation of the water. You're, you're like, what the fuck? And then two people who are sat behind me realize what I'm doing and start hitting me in the back. Oh, what the fuck are you doing? Stop pissing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, I'm trying to apologise. But I surely look... that's not helping because you're... No, it's not helping. You while you're making pissing. making it worse, if anything. And then I look up at the girl who's still up in front of me <laughs> and she looks me right in the face and she says, it's going all over my legs. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And I look down. Margaret, it's not even going in the bowl a little bit. I'm... <laughs> I'm basically now just pissing on the floor. Like I am mortified. <laughs> so five minutes later, we pull into San Antonio. <laughs> Maybe I could have waited five minutes. <laughs> A long five minutes. San Antonio, I get off the bus. <laughs> holding my head. I don't want to look at anybody. It was getting off the bus. I could just see people going, oh man, <laughs> someone pissed on the floor. Who the fuck pissed on the floor? On the bus. <laughs> I look at the bottle that I'm still holding, right? I look at the bottle, Marcus, there's like four drops in the bottle. I barely got any in there. And I get off the bus and the girls are 
prob- probably more embarrassed for me, right? And I just say to them, I said, I said, be honest with me. Don't try and make me feel good or anything. Okay, level with me. How many people do you think just saw that? <laughs> <laughs> and they went, honestly, like maybe five, maybe six <laughs> people. I was like, oh, no. All right, well, good night. See you later. Uh, that was it. I left them. I left. Of course I did. I want to be like, hey, so I uh, want to come around to my house. <laughs> yeah, so I can wash the piss off your legs. Pissed, you should have said, hey, do you want to come around to my house? We wash that piss off your legs. So I go back to my hotel and all the next day, I'm just nursing my hangover right, and I just spend the entire day refreshing my timeline on Twitter. Like, please, please, please don't tell me someone film now or just please, no footage. All right, no footage. And I'm I'm sort of safe in the knowledge that a lot of people were out of it on that bus, probably didn't even notice what was going on. But also, right, I was trying to piss into the bottle. I was not being drunk and just pissing on the floor. I wasn't. I was trying my hardest to piss into this bottle, one-handed, whilst being stood up on a bus that's flying down the road at like sixty miles an hour. If I think I'm going to pick one part of the story that, that that messed up for you, one part of that plan was probably trying to piss into the bottle one-handedly. I should have just. I should have just gone into the corner, and used both hands, and, and then just weed into the bottle. And pissed on the floor. Oh, man. It's mortified. But you know what was funny? The next day, mutual friend of ours, Simba, came out with a mate of his. That's why I extended my trip because we ended up hanging out for a couple of days. I told them that story and then being like, Preston boys, Caners or whatever, were like, nah, like... <laughs> <laughs> and what? Like, so... <laughs> yeah, and? They were not even a little bit impressed by that story. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's... Because the- I told them about how mortified I was the next day. Like, hot with embarrassment that I had done something like that. Like, the, the, but what else could I do? What, the alternative was to piss myself on this bus or try and piss into a bottle. I tried to go for the latter. It didn't work out very well. Might have pissed on a few people. Sorry. But I'd, wh- what is the other alternative? Surely I would have looked more out of it if I'd have just pissed myself. I'm like, oh, oh, I just weed myself. Surely you could have just stopped the bus though somehow. I don't, oh, it couldn't have, man. It was, in the, it was in the motorway. What I should have done is I shouldn't have left the club. I should have stayed there and watched fucking Red Light and Shadow Child, two of my favourite So did you even get DJs. to see your DJs then? I saw a bit of Red Light. Okay, cool. That's sick. Well, that's right, a good I'm pissy story then. Thank I'm gonna you have very to, much. I'm going to have to call my manager and ask if, you, if, I can, <laughs> if, yeah. I can let, if I can let people hear this story. Fuck. If it, again, it just feels good to sort of get that off my chest. And you know the worst thing is all the girls were so... Think about how fuckery they could have been. If I had the eh, fucking nasty, eh, eh, he's pissing everywhere, but they, I think they, you know, in a situation like that, you got to be wrong and strong. They you saw, fucked up. There's nothing else pity. you can do. You got to be wrong and strong. You got to say, "Hey, listen, shit happens." I'm sorry. Do you want to know the funniest part? Well, shit, unfortunately, didn't happen. Do you want to know the funniest part of that story for me? Mm-hmm. I went for a drink with a girl the next day. <laughs> <laughs> so you still went for a drink the next day, Dev. I mean, it's testament to how much of a charming, suave, sophisticated gentleman I am, isn't it? That I can piss all over a girl's legs and she's still interested the next day. Can I also make absolutely clear that that wasn't my intention? That given the situation, I only had two options. Either piss myself or attempt in a very unfit state to try and piss into a bottle in front of a bus full of people. There's my two options. That's all I had. And I went for it. I feel like you were inebriated to the point where you felt like there were less eyes on you than there were at the oh, time. Oh, yeah. And you were probably standing in the middle of the bus, just swaying, pissing all over the place. I was 100% in the middle of the bus. Fortunately, a lot of other people were on the same wave that I was. So Good. weren't really in any kind of fit state to focus on what I was doing anyway. But I remember getting off the bus and I turned to the girls who, the group of girls I was with, and I said, be, be honest with me. Don't try and make me feel better. How many people do you think noticed what I was doing? And they went about eight or nine people, like clocked on to what you were doing. So, all right. Thanks very much. Good night. I'll see you later. <laughs> Walked off. I'll see you tomorrow the for a drink. San Antonio sunset. Yeah. Nice. Awful. Nice one. More fun. But you know what? It's, it's something about those stories that at the time, and I, I do remember feeling this vividly at the time, so mortifying. 
It was so mortifying having to have gone through that and, and, and to have done that to somebody as well. Like, I basically uh, pissed on this poor girl's legs. Uh, but after a little bit of time goes, pi- goes by, it becomes one of my best stories. It was so funny in hindsight. At the time, awful, but in hindsight, just so brilliant. It's the I stories think, that I, make it's up. It's innocent, isn't it? It's innocent. It's not like you were like, yeah, and I was pissing out a window and hit somebody. Yeah. You just needed to go, brother. When you so go badly. Go, you so go. badly. Like, and there'll be people, maybe there's a couple of people listening who are like, well, I would have held it. Well, you've never been in that situation before, okay, where your only option, your only option is to piss yourself or piss on the floor. What are you going to do? Choose wisely. You've been very, you're lucky. If you've never been in a situation like that, you're lucky. If you've managed to hold yeah. it, it's because you can. Yeah. yeah. And how, and right. how understanding of that group of girls as well to sort of, they tried to form a kind of like human shield around me. Piss shield. They were a yeah, piss a shield. Sort of Dev. A human piss shield around me to protect my, my dignity. They did that for me. That's so wow. nice. Forever touch. They really took Thank a you. hit for the team. A piss Whoever you girls well. are, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. And I know you snuck a little look, right? I know you had a little look. Uh, they're they're right entitled that. to that. If mate, yeah. if I'm shielding your piss, yeah, yeah, and I'm one of them, I'm having a look, mate. That's I that's tried the to tax. do the sort of. I tried to sort of like pinch the end and then cover up the rest with my hand. I tried to do that. I tried to get the yeah. end in like thumb and forefinger or index, and then try and like cover up the. Rest. But there just there just was no. I was in no state to do it. Isn't that kind of like if you get a tap that hasn't got much pressure and you kind of put your thumb well, over it, you get loads of pressure. It sprays really well, hard. Well, Marcus, that was the problem. That was mm. the problem. I picked the wrong technique. Now, in hindsight, mm. what I should have done is fully pulled out my cock, held the bottle in front of it and just did it that way. That would have been more effective. Sure, people would have sort of seen what I was doing, but I wouldn't have got as much piss on the floor, I don't think. Or... Moved everybody out of the way and gone into the corner of the bus to do it. But what I was trying not to do is cause alarm or make a scene or honestly have everybody on the bus notice me. But yeah, such is life. Yeah, that's how it is. And moving on from that, Dev, from a pissy story to a shitty story, a theme that we've covered a lot here on How to Kill an Hour. This is from episode 321, where we talk to you, Dev, about our st- it's a question that we've asked many guests and, and we first spoke about when Nick Bright was on the show and we discussed it in the last episode of this 100 run. And that is whether you stand up or sit down when you go for a shit. I mean, I, you know, I've heard you lot talking about this before. Here's the thing I don't understand. Okay. Why is it one or the other? We've had hybrids. There's so, you know, every shit is so different. Mm-hmm. That you never know what to expect. Um, you got to, you got to adapt. You know, you can't, it's not just a one straight rule for everything. So I'll tell you what is, is a game changer for me, like last year or so. And I don't give a fuck about fat bags. Right? I don't, don't come with me that. Baby wipes, bruv. Baby wipes is a game changer. I've almost got it down to a perfect science, right? So I do. I do usually my, my morning movements quite like heavy, quite dense, you know what I mean? But also quite a lot of product as well. So I'm using the toilet a good 15 minutes just to make sure I get everything. I, go, I call it sometimes like my stress dump. Just all my stress just gathering in my gut. Just get to just ugh, first thing in the morning to get on with the rest of my day. All right. So what I'll do that first wipe. I'm not even looking at that, bruv. That's a fucking write off, man. I don't need to look at that. That's, I know what that's going to look like. It's never going to look <laughs> it's gonna good. It's going to be a mess, a hot mess. I'm not even looking at it. Yeah. I'm like, psh, psh, psh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not even a little, little peek. No, bro, gone. That first one is a write off. See you later, mate. Then the next one, all right, now we've got to see what we're working with. <laughs> all right, have a little peek. Cool. Fold via environment. Fold. Have a little wipe. Then baby wipe. Baby white comes out now. Because I know I got a main. You know what I mean? Got a bit, a bit, a baby white comes out. You using ones at the moment? Coated in fucking coconut oil. Jeez. That's what I'm saying. Jeez. So that, that first one goes now. I have a peek at that as well to see that. What are we working with? Usually, good, on a good day, it's looking all right. But here's the thing you're getting a bit of residue left from that baby white. You don't want to pull your trousers up. You still got a little bit of baby white residue. Mm-hmm. You don't want that. So now, tissue again. Aggressive. Wipe this time. Aggressive. 
to get off some of the the residue, but Coconut also residue. But, but also see what okay, see what's going on. Fold environment, aggressive. Have a look. Throw now one more tissue. Polish off for just a gentle. Yeah. Let's see, because what I'm trying to do with that last one is replicate what my clothes are going to be doing against my asshole for the rest of the day. Okay, so if I go a little, whoof, just kind of <laughs> gentle, kind of, whoof, and have a look, clean, Safe, clean, then I'm done. But here's the thing: if by that first baby wipe one, if it's still looking a bit, mm, <laughs> mm, I might be here for a while. Mm, I did a few courtesy flushes. I will stand up. I will stand up at that point, right? Because again, what I'm trying to do is replicate my day. How am I going to be moving? You know, like I'm, I don't know if you know this about me. I'm extremely flexible. You know, <laughs> like very supple <laughs> joints. Right, I like to move around a little bit. You know, like sometimes I would just be wearing out a bus stop, and I just like move, touch your toes. I just move myself <laughs> around a little bit, trying to see what get myself into a right angle. And see what I, <laughs> um. But again, I, there, there's been some dumps that I've done that you require you to stand up to make sure you're getting everything. Because one thing I will not accept as a grown man is a shitty ass. I won't. I won't do it. I, th- I yeah. won't do it. It's not acceptable. I, I, it's not acceptable. If I'm at your house and I need to use all of your toilet tissue just to make sure that I'm not even a little bit shitty. Sorry, bruv, you're going to have to go without. Because there's nothing like, and I've learned through experience at a young age, having a shitty ass on a hot day. Horrible. Why? why? Horrible. Why would you, have you to do all the horror, horror of a skid mark? God. It's just so unacceptable to me. As I got, it's so unacceptable. Even just a little bit. It's like, oh my God, I've let everybody let yourself down. down. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't look at myself in the mirror and be like, you fucking animal. What is that? Skid mark fucker. You can't even look... Are you, are you, are you supposed to do anything? You can't look after yourself. You can't even wipe your arms properly, bro. So all I'm saying is if you, if you lot are committing to I only stand up or I only sit down, I just... I, 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 I feel like you're selling yourself short. You know? Adapt. And grow, adapt and grow, adapt and grow. Don't confine yourself to just just one thing, that's all I'm saying. So with that being said, the majority of the time, where are you at? Here's the, th- here's the other thing. I don't know if anyone's brought this up yet. We're not even shitting properly. Oh, um, we've had we've had the conversation about having properly. the... Uh, I think Jordan Crisp and CJ Beats were talking about having the, the shit... The We're not even shitting properly. Yeah. So we need to be how squatting. Dare, how dare I, we... How dare us, <laughs> them? How, how dare us talk about whether we stand up or sit down? Because we're not even shitting properly. We're supposed to be squatting. Like they do. I remember having some very bad noodles in an Indonesian airport and having to try and use the like squat hole in the floor thing that they have. And I paced around that for about 20 minutes, bro. Going, there's just no way. My Western arsehole is not going to be able to like get shit. I'm going to shit all over my shoes. I mean, I might not be able to get back up again. I'm, I'm worried something might fall, fall out. down the hole. I just, I don't, how am I supposed to do that? I had to go to the desk and level. I said, listen, I'm from London. Okay. We don't have toilets like that. I'm not going to be able to use that. You know where he let me use the toilet? In the first class fucking lounge in the airport. Jeez. The only one that they had in the whole airport. It's like, thanks, man. Was it a good, a, was you, a good toilet? You've done me a solid. It was amazing. But I didn't no. think about it afterwards. I thought about it so much like, why can't I just do the little squat shit? Do you know what it is? I don't think it's something that, you know, say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I, I think that's what it's down to. I think you can't be 34 years old trying to squat and shit for the first time. You know, have you've done it before and you know what to expect or you're forever going to shit how you shit. I want to get you the stool. I want to get you the stool and see how that is. Because you're not squatting, you're still sitting, but you just have your feet raised a little bit. So like what, just like, kind of... Yeah, it's just a little stool. Lift, like your, legs, little, like like a lift your legs up a little bit. Yeah, a little step, the, yeah. I'm just then, trying to picture yeah. what I'd be like to use like right now. Dev's right now, he's got his feet up, his hands up by his knees, his knees up by his face, I say. That might be, yeah, that, that might be yeah. quite enjoyable. Yeah, try I would, it out. I would, take, I would take one of them off you. Happy birthday. Yeah, be a little birthday present Don't for Don't buy it for me for my birthday. Christmas? But Sorry. Valentine's she nearly tipped over your whole desk <laughs> Sorry <laughs> But it's funny Inside that whole conversation You you touched on something This has been going down On mum's net And Huffington Post Yet yeah, that is where we find Ooh. Time to research stuff So there's a whole thing People talk about Scrunching Folding 
and other methods like that because uh, apparently folding means the paper's thinner and your fingers are more likely nah, to tear through nah, and give nah, you poopy nah, fingers. Nah, nah. Listen, listen. Scrunching gives you a bit of roughness to nah, clean properly. Nah, mate. Nah, mate. If you're scrunching up the tissue yeah. to wipe your ass, you need to get your fucking life together, mate. What is that? That's not effective. What are you, what are you cleaning up? Like some fucking built your zoo what are you doing like that needs to be that needs to be neat and folded like it's efficient how do you fold the scrunch you can get shit all over your hands what are you talking about you can't fold the no flat always so you can't you, yeah you can't fold a scrunch because that's that's dangerous no, but you can that's fold that's such a waste you'd have to scrunch it after one wipe yeah, it's gone with the, and with the wet wipe do you fold it or do you, you don't scrunch it's a folded wet wipe okay here's Here's the here's the, the weird thing about using the baby wipe. Yeah, you do have to fold it, but you're probably getting a little bit of shit through the wet wipe, right? It's not. It's I mean, feasible. it's porous, isn't it's it? It's feasible. It's feasible. It's porous. And the, the coconut, in your case, the coconut juice could transfer through <laughs> through the wet wipe, and the juice may have touched your body and then touched your hand. We're, we're going to wash our hands anyway, right? You're, you're 100 going to wash your hands. But what I'm saying is like. A baby wipe's porous, so you're probably getting a little bit of doo doo yeah. you know, on your finger like, every yeah. time you yeah. there's a little yeah. bit. Yeah. If you're putting your hand down there, odds are there'll be fecal matter on your hands. Probably. Yeah. That's why you gotta wash your hands, man. Okay. Now, I've seen like two people this year come out of the toilet after having a shit. They need to die. Fix their hair and just walk out of the fucking like, You know what? You're the reason like we still got like the fucking plague in certain places, man. Mm. You're the reason like kids are still being born with rickets, bro. Like yeah, wash you your fucking, fucking hands. Man. That's disgusting. You're gonna shake my hands, give me like ringworm or something. That's disgusting. You're gonna go sneeze over a salad or something. Like come you're, on. You're gonna scratch your eye with your shitty finger Ugh. and get pink eye. You dirty fucker. Flip it up, it's man. Disgusting. I hate we have to share the planet with those yeah. people. So man. you're a folder. I think I'm a folder as well. I don't I'm not a fan of using wet wipes though, because of the fat fatberg stuff. Uh fuck them fatbergs. <laughs> right, right. So you know this is the sad thing, isn't it? About I think the difference between our generation and say kids. When we were told in hundred and fifty years time, like all of East Anglia is going to be underwater or whatever global warming da, 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 da. we're like mm, I ain't gonna be I'm going to be long yeah. gone by the, I mean we will be here we're going to live forever by the time we're 80 we're going to be in a fucking server or something yeah, man. Like that. Downloaded. they would have done chappy but yeah. in real life like, we'll, we'll be chappy yeah. um, but for you know our kids kids like, that's kind of a reality for them they're like well like in 80 100 years time like, my kids kids or whatever they're going to have to so personally, I, I know this is awful. I'm not really thinking that much about the fat bag. Right? I'm like, that's a necessary. And I don't, I don't think I overindulge with the wet wipes either. But it, it, it's probably a really awful thing. But I value the cleanliness of my own asshole more than I'm concerned about fat bags. Could you compromise with wet tissue paper? Using a bit more, nah, dude. If you, you had a little jar of to, coconut you oil, seen maybe spray it the tissue when you wet it. it yeah, breaks, breaks up. up. So you have to use a bit more. I just get broken up tissue, Marcel. You never seen that before. You never seen a girl you're like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do they know? By the way, nah, they don't the know. girls know that How you see you? their asshole so much. Like if you're in a relationship with a girl, right? You see her arsehole so much, don't you? You see, her, you see it so much from angles that they never and without using a mirror and squatting over it from angles that we would never see. Like I've seen my arsehole maybe like twice in my whole life. I've had a look at my arsehole and go, "Meh, okay, <laughs> yeah, I see. All right." Well, I think that's an example of how um, things definitely can go a little bit left, Dev. You got me thinking about arseholes in a totally different way, bro. I have looked at my arsehole one more time since we made that recording. What technique did you use? It's a lockdown. In the mirror. In the mirror, I sort of go like, you like part the cheeks a little bit and then you kind of look at it through your own legs. So there's a mirror on the wall? Yeah, I've got like a slidey mirror. Yeah. Yeah. That's like I think everyone should look at their arsehole at least once. Hey, listen, you got to make sure shit's going on all right back there. That's not a part of your body you want to neglect. That's an important part. What if there's something going on there back there, like a dreadlock or something? Or you just (laughs) want 
You got to learn. I think I've seen. I think I've seen a bit of it while I'm giving myself some self maintenance and male grooming because I'm a cock a leg up on the on the on the on the sink kind of guy to make sure that I'm trimming. Oh uh, right, right okay. places. Yeah. So I don't think yeah. I've got a full like. It's not looked me in the eye. If you know what I mean. I got you. I got you. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah. I, anyway, I, moving. I, through. <laughs> I think it's all part. It's all part of self care. You know, you got to look after your mental health. Try and get you in 10,000 steps and look at your arsehole. Give, have a look at your arsehole. Just see what it looks like. Do you know what? It's weird Give that it some will. of the things that we do all the time, like going for a shit, yeah. Mental health. Death. We don't talk about these things enough. And yeah. I know it sounds like I'm trivializing the bumhole by putting that in that, in, that, in that list of things, but we need to discuss these things more, you know. Just I, say, Dev. I, well, maybe I not us. I think we're onto something here. I think... Black men's arseholes are one of the most taboo subjects ever, I think. Think about... I don't think those... I've never heard those words ever in my life in, I that, don't, in that formation. I, I don't think anyone's ever said it before. It's just, that's a world first. I'm just thinking about, in my circle of friends, around my black friends, I wouldn't talk about my or their arsehole, ever. If my never. arsehole was giving me problems, you know, say, all right, say this. You needed to look at your asshole, right? You're out in a field somewhere. You need to look at your asshole. You need to see what's going on back there. Okay. And you can pick any one of your friends to just come and have a glance. Okay. Be honest. What color is that friend? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. What color is. <laughs> what not color is that friend? What, what not say? color is that? <laughs> do, you, do you know what, Dev? I'm being honest with you, like, mate. I think I'm picking no friend. I think I'm going to do the no, wrong thing and not address my you, medical you issue. You can't do a would you rather and then go, well, I'm not going to pick either one. You'd pick a white friend. That's why. <laughs> You'd pick a white friend because they would do it. They'd go, sure, man, no problem. Let's have a look. Let's see what you're working with. Come on. If I ask any of my black friends, but seriously, this is life or death, okay? I need you to look at my arsehole and tell me what's going on. They'll be like, I'm sorry, you're going to die, right? Because I'm not doing that. I don't know why. I don't know why. Fuck. <sighs> I tell you what, this is just whole new ground. But anyway, this this is an episode where we're reviewing stuff, Dev. I think we should save that conversation for save a full the, episode there. Save Black Man's Arsehole for another episode. Got ya. Okay. I tell you, should it's a grabby title that? though, isn't it? It's a <laughs> grabby title though. We'll put that. That's that's very clickable. Uh, in that same episode, 321, we also discussed an issue with protection. One more thing as well, and I'd like you to um, help help our very own Billy with this because oh. this is something that um, really? I think I want you to make him aware of Dev it's a little article that we've come across well he doesn't use condoms uh, Billy think, what are you playing at man I think I'm just I'm just showing Dev the article which is on how to clean okay. out and I think it's it's just for a public service announcement apparently this is something that needs to be known by okay. many people the article is called don't use condoms <laughs> twice so apparently some crazy people out there are doing something we never thought we'd see they're reusing and washing condoms just look at this tweet from cdc std who's that S- cdc i got a tick um we say we say it because people do it don't wash or reuse hashtag condoms use a fresh one for each hashtag sex act were you aware that so many people were rinsing out condoms and using them that's what they used to do turning them inside out really that's what they used to do yeah in, in like the forties, you would get like given like your granddad's Johnny or whatever, and be like, "Hey, you go, son!" Like, and you'd use it, and then you know you'd finish like, "Fuck off!" Stick, <laughs> stick that on the sink with like the wash. Look Fuck it up. Off. You'd like stick it on the sink with the washing or whatever. Like, rinse that out. Pop it in your top pocket. What were you they made I mean? out? Of? Like Michelin tires then to get the wear out of them. Yeah, I don't think it was. Um, I don't mean that latex technology back then. Yeah, what would have been like putting on like a fucking balaclava made of like fucking rubber? <laughs> this has got to be a, this has got to be someone playing a joke on me at Google. I just googled nineteen forties condom. The first one that came up is called Nutex, and they come in a tin, bro. That's <laughs> Nutex in a tin. <laughs> Nutex condoms. Yo, if you if you're gonna nut. Take it to the next level with Nutex. If you um, if you fucking pull a Johnny out in front of a girl that's coming out of a tin, bro. <laughs> 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 
If she still let she like sleep with her after that, that's gangster right there. You're putting uh, out a tin. Uh, Give it a little tap first. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, they were radium radium condoms. What is radium? That don't sound like something you should put on your dick, does it? Like it's, if you're like if you're like put this on, it's gonna like make you perform amazing. Cool. What's it made out of? Radium. radium. I'm like, nah. nah you're either gonna bro. become a superhero with a super dick, no, yeah, or nah, you're gonna die. I nah, I don't wanna risk it. Radium. You it, know? Ra- it readily relax with, reacts with nitrogen on exposure to air for with a black surface layer of radium nitride. Yeah, that's too many chemicals already right there. It's a, it's a chemical element with a symbol RA. Uh, R-A, an atomic number 88. No, it's got an atomic number. Wow. How dangerous is radium? There's no evidence that exposure to naturally present levels of radium has harmful effects on human health. You know, you know they're I, usually caused by gamma radiation. What, what, gamma why are people, does it not explain why people are reusing condoms? Is it an economy thing? It's fucking Brexit, isn't it? It's, I bet it is. It's, I bet it, Brexit's uh, the reason why people are trying to save money on Johnny's by reusing them. People, Could you go and buy a new one, man? People weren't aware. A very small percentage of people that is growing, like, we're talking like 5 6%, but it's quite important. So people aren't aware Who that oils... Are homeschooled pagans or something? <laughs> Who's reusing the... Young people... Aren't aware apparently. Idiots. So Billy, I just want to put this to bi- our saying. producer Billy just to make sure that he's mm. using condoms r- once and just once, Billy. Once, man. Once that's it. Entirely. Just use I mean, once and then throw it in the tire, not in the end, and throw it in the bin. Yeah, but a bit of advice though. If, you know, if you're having it for a posh wank though, I'm just saying, bruv a wash and reuse ain't why gonna be a problem. Wh- then is it? Why is it still a little bit embarrassing to buy Johnny's from the shop? Because you're saying I'm, you're, you're saying I'm, I'm about to have fucking. some I'm fucking like, yeah. Especially when you like Run in there at like 2am yeah. On a Thursday morning You're like Boss, boss man, boss man Never mind, yeah. never mind No, no, yeah. further light, further yeah. light Yeah, yeah, yeah Cool, cool, cool Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And he's it's, looking at you going Are you going to fuck? And you're saying Yeah, I'm going to fuck Do you ever Do you ever try and Like buy other stuff To go with it? Like <laughs> To like lessen the impact, like random petrol station but stuff like a, I mean, a rabbit hutch, yeah, and a, then some condoms. Anything you buy with yeah. it is gonna look weird. Like you be in there trying to buy like a, a flash pack of yeah. super malt and like some quavers, and then uh, yeah, yeah. Also, give me give me yeah. a pack of condoms as well. Like, Any, why? Anything you buy, people are gonna associate that with the sex. So if you if you buy quavers, he's gonna think you're somehow using I've the quavers during quavers sex off someone's back. Yeah, What's wrong with this yeah. guy. Um, do you know? I, we need to start owning it no because you know what is more embarrassing than going to buy condoms what? chlamydia bro <laughs> hell yes illegitimate children hell bruv. yes hell yes fucking gonorrhea and the rest is in a drippy willy mate that yeah. is embarrassing fuck that and, and sh- genital awards yeah. is embarrassing you know um I got a, a, a lot of funny um uh, STI clinic story right Oh no, two. I'll do two quick ones. One, as I was coming out of a uh, STI clinic, this is like the one that used to be an archway. So I was probably about 19, 20 years old. And as I was coming out, this girl tried to chat me up while I was outside. She's like, oh yeah, where you going? I'm going home. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going home to go cross my fingers <laughs> until I get my results. And she's like, oh cool, can I get your number? I'm like, nah. You're not really trying to chop me outside of fucking ST. Unless was it apparent? Unless you show me a clean bill. <laughs> <laughs> and let's just show me your results yeah. where we're like here yeah, I'm all clean like what are you doing anyway another time I went this um this woman comes in a uh, woman comes to get me I'm sat in this room and she like pulls this fucking I, 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 I sit on the little like table bed thingy mm. pull my trousers down to my knees and she's like sifting through my pubes you know and like, trying to look for any like any bumps any lumps whatever any abrasions and she just kind of looks up at me and she goes oh I've actually got two student nurses with me today do you mind if they come in and observe the procedure so I was like okay like mm-hmm. just trying to be helpful just trying to help out and then like these two like 19 year old interns come in and pull up a chair and they sit around me and the light is not dissimilar to this microphone it's like <laughs> like shining this light down on my fucking dick and balls and sifting through it lifting up the sack whatever see that's all it's normal there and da 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 and I just had like this it was not sexual at how all how did your dick react to this then? 
knowing it was under that scrutiny. You know what? People react differently to that kind of pressure. You no, know, I was very, was very proud of my little guy. Well, right? well done. Didn't get, didn't get scared. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Realized what was going on. Oh, bit of an audience. Okay, okay all okay. right. But it was not sexual at all. Funny enough, we like bring this up because I tell you where I was a little bit worried D- during the uh, SAS Who Dares Wins thing. Yeah, it was so cold. So cold yeah. sometimes, and sometimes you know you might jump in some cold water and you get out and it's still cold, right? After that couple of days, I remember there was one time I stripped off, but I looked down at my dick and I was like, "I'm sorry, is this my dick from when I was four years old? Where is it, bro? Your dick's probably looking to go back in time, not just back inside you. Your dick's probably." Disappeared, bruv. You ever had that your one, body's probably consumed your dick. You ever had that one where it's like shriveled and twisted around? You're like, <laughs> what? I don't see the back of it. Like, what? <laughs> hey, <laughs> this is on telly, man. What, what are you doing? <laughs> your balls and your dick were inside you for the last half of that, weren't they? Oh, mate, it looked like it'd been fucking choked out. Like someone. <laughs> Like, like he'd forgotten to tap out. Someone, <laughs> your dick got mummified. <laughs> your dick looked mummified. <laughs> like, come on, man. Shit. All right, yeah, we got into mummified dicks there, but bruv, that was. I can't believe that. That's a bit mental, man. Reusing condoms. Yeah, th- this is a story that's popped up again. So in Vietnam. Yeah, hang yeah. on. I'm just reading through the article now. In Vietnam, police seized 324,000 used condoms being washed and ready to be resold. Now, there's a lot of questions. A lot, a lot of questions going on here. Mainly, I need to know where they're getting the used Johnnies from. Where are they getting them from? They're going to like raiding bins and alleyways. Where? That's what I'm thinking. Where would you pick up? A used condom. Because mine goes straight, mine goes straight in the Ruffles? bin. Ruffles? I like to, what I like to do, I like to take yeah. the used Johnny off, a tie little mm. knot at the end. Yes. Right? And that's not just because I'm paranoid that somebody might try and use it, right? To like recreate a clone of me somewhere or something like that. I just think it's, it, it's like tying up a, a, a bin liner before you chuck it in the rubbish, right? It's just considerate. Yeah. So I like to tie a knot in it, wrap it in tissue, and then throw it in the bin. So, there must be a place that they're going to that's a reliable source of used Johnnies. Do you know what I'm saying? And the poor workers that have to like dig them all out, give a little, <sighs> I assume that's what they're doing, <laughs> blowing on it a couple of times, like rinsing it off and then repackaging it. Well, apparently, Dev, they, need, they, they were clean somehow and they were reshaped as well. Uh, they had to reshape um, these condoms. Some dudes big massive schlongs are just like all bending it out of out of shape like all stretching it all out oh my and, gosh oh i think yeah I, this is probably not this is not a, a good thing for me to say but if given the option i think i would have i would rather have unprotected sex with somebody i don't know that well than if somebody went here use this it's a pre-used and repackaged Johnny. I'll, I'll be like, I'll take my chances. I'll take my chances. Oh, it's a poorly rewashed and reshapen condom as well. So you, you know, let's, let's be honest. Let's be honest, right? We know where they're getting these Johnnies from. We know where they're getting these Johnnies from. It's brothels. got to be brothel. It's got yeah. to be. There's a deal going on with the madams or the people who run these brothels. They've got a little side hustle going on. That's like, as well as selling vag, We'll also sell used to Johnny's. We'll double our profits. That's what's going on. Sell some of the stuff from the sticky dicky committee. Wow. I, bet, I bet there's some madams and brothel owners that are upset they didn't think of it first. I'm also, I mean, yeah, I mean, you'd be feel like you're missing the trick. There might be turf wars over reused condoms <laughs> that we don't know about. This could be like, you know, John Wick. At the start, you thought he was just an assassin, but you realise there was this massive, intricate scheme and history. There could be history in used condoms that we don't know about, Dev. There could be a documentary, a film. There could be a John Wick of condoms out there, bro. I, I feel like there is a black market for almost anything, right? You can buy drugs, kids, a wife on the black market, but black market Johnny's is not something I'm interested to. Like, if somebody walks up to me in an alleyway, and opens up a briefcase. <laughs> I got some stuff, man. 
opens up a briefcase with a bunch of like creased up Johnnies in there. I'm not interested. I'll I'll go to Boots, mate, and suffer the three seconds of embarrassment to just buy Johnnies. Which, by the way, can just quick side note. It's always been a little bit embarrassing to walk into a shop or a chemist and buy condoms for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know if girls feel the same way about buying um, uh, uh, tampons and stuff because it's not like you're buying it and maybe you're using it for something else. It's like, no, if you, if you run to a, a petrol station or an off license and you're all out of breath at two o'clock in the morning, you're like, oh, I need some condoms, please. It's like, oh, you're fucking, you're running back home. Mm. You're fucking immediately. But I've noticed since wearing a mask, I now walk into a chemist and I'm happy to buy bumper packs, bro. I'm happy to buy bumper packs, different brands, a few tubes of lube in there as well, because you never know. And I, I can look I can look the person right in their face as I'm as I'm buying it. And it's something about now my identity is slightly hidden that I'm not as embarrassed about buying Johnny's now. So you're slamming those Johnnies down with attitude. And, going, <laughs> and what? Yeah. Keep the it's change. Like you know why? I'm in a good mood and it's about to get better. <laughs> Guess where I'm going. It's always been <laughs> such a stupid thing to be embarrassed about. If you think about it. It's, it's, it's like we just said, it's like those, it's things that you need to do in life that we find weird. Like sex is something this, it's one of the reasons why we are on this earth is to duplicate. Yeah. Everybody Fine. does it. And, Exactly. But it's like, if you run into the same scenario, you run into an off license, right? Or you run into a petrol station, a 24 hour store at like three in the morning, sweat dripping down your face and you slam a packet of toilet papers on the counter. He's also going to know that you are about to take a gargantuan shit, probably in the back of your pants. If you don't get this toilet paper <laughs> ASAP. So it's mad out there. I don't know. I don't know why we even, I don't know I've, why we're weird about it, bruv. We should, I like, I'll be honest, that. Dev. I'm never like, Dev, you know what? I just, I've got to go now because I'm, I'm going to take a really big, good shit. Like, I'd never say that. I'd be like, oh, I've just got to nip off to the loo. I'll be back in a sec. Or, I wouldn't even say that. It's back in a minute, mate. Do you know what I mean? We don't I, discuss these things. I have done that. I have woken up for like eight o'clock in the morning, dying for that first, you know, oh, bit of movement. Shit. Yeah. And I'll go to the toilet and I realize, oh, there's not enough for what I would consider to be like a stress free dump. So what I'm going to go do, I'm going to go buy some tissues. I've just got plenty and I'll go shop and I won't try and bulk it out with other things. So it looks like, oh, I'm just doing a general shop. Nah, I walk in there by my 24 pack and I walk down the street with it as well. I don't know that, but there's people probably looking like, oh, uh, you know what he's doing, right? Uh, he's, he's going for it. But for some reason, that's not as embarrassing to me. I'm not embarrassed that people can tell that I'm going somewhere to go for a shit. But for some reason, I'm embarrassed to walk into a shop and buy condoms. I, should be something you're proud of. It should way, be like it a badge of honour. Yeah, it should be yeah. like a way you should slam them down and go, that's right. You know yeah. what I'm about to do. But you Safely as well. Safely and, as well. I try and hide it in my in my other shopping items. I'll be like, yeah. uh, uh, here's uh, 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 some apples, some ne nectarines. Uh, I've got some almond milk, uh, a bag of crisps, uh, <coughs> condoms. And uh, <laughs> I'll also have some, some cotton buds. It's like, why? Why do we have to be like that? And also because they're a premium price product as well. You're more than likely to have them behind the counter. So you have to ask for them. Toilet paper you can pick up, right? And you can even self-scan. Condoms, no. You have to You have to ask for them. Why do they sell them in packs of three as well? Three is not enough. <laughs> three is not enough. Think about it. Okay. If you're going to spend the night with somebody, three condoms is not enough. You'll use one for that. I, I might just be speaking for myself, okay? Nine times out of ten, this is what's going to happen. You're going to spend the night with somebody. I'll use that one Johnny, okay? All over and done with. Great. Chances are, hour or so later, maybe a bit longer, now that I'm 35, you're probably going to want to do it again. You're going to use that second Johnny. Probably not going to come, though. Probably just going to, like, go for a bit and go, oh, actually, do you know what? We've kind of reached that point now let's just chill you're not going to reuse that johnny so that johnny goes away you'll go to sleep wake up in the morning and again chances are it's one of my favorite things sex first thing in the morning you're now going to want to use that johnny but if there's any that allows there's no, no room, contingency but there's no room for any error there's no room for any no error or mistake man. And, and if you, if you mess up one of those Johnnies, you don't know, put it on the right way or it slips off or it breaks or something, you're screwed. Now you've got to make another trip 
to go and get selling condoms in packs of three, I think is irresponsible and mean. They should come in 12 packs only. They should be free. There should be condom dispensers in the street. Like, here you go. They should be lobbing at us, lobbing them at, lobbing them at us as we come out of train stations. Like, please take some drugs. <laughs> But you know what? In nightclubs, though, that's where the premium is even higher, and you're only getting one little one tell little them, rusty one. one that dr- drops out of the machine. Ain't they like single? But there must be single pack ones, isn't it? Um, little Johnny machines that they have in the in the bathrooms, and also actually, anyway, Dev. Now that because of this um, article that you've read, we now know that you can actually just sort yourself out, wash it out, reshape it, and go again, right? If they're doing it over there. That was one of the big revelations that we had on the show before is we discovered uh, World War II condoms. Remember the ones in the tin? Yeah. That you'd have to like put the little tin opener in and <laughs> apparently they would reuse those as well. I would have been totally against if they found out some way, some material to... Actually, no, that wouldn't be very fair on the other person, would it? Like if you hooked up with this girl and she went, oh, have you got a condom? And you go, no. And she goes, don't worry. I've got my old faithful here. I've had this one for a couple of years. Just slip that one on. You wouldn't, would you? Give it, it a quick you know, rinse. I've, I've Give it a quick rinse. So, and, then, and then you put it on me. and then you realize it's really baggy. <laughs> How would that would make you like, feel inside? Would it be like finding like a, an XXXL hoodie like in your girlfriend's drawer? You'd be like, why have you got one of these? You'd be like, because my ex-boyfriend was a fucking starter in the NFL. You're like, oh, okay. Oh, I understand. Yeah, Im- immediately you're like, yeah, my mojo has just leaked out of me. I think it's time to go home. All right, yeah. it was nice knowing you. And yeah, maybe we should be friends sometime. You don't want the embarrassment. You don't want to go there after Shaq. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. another silly thing as well. Being insecure about whether or not your girl, her previous, have had like bigger cocks than you. That's a silly thing to be insecure about. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous because... But I have a friend who has an enormous penis. And I'll tell you this, it's an ailment. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it, it causes problems. He's not able to... Girls will see it and be like, nah, 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 I'm good, I'm good. So I don't know, in our minds we think, oh, it'd be great to have this like fucking 14-inch penis that's like as girthy as a Coke can. But actually, I, I, I don't, I've never heard a girl say that. Maybe I'm just saying that to make myself feel better. Maybe your friend's saying it to make you feel better. <laughs> oh, no, no, girls, never want this. You're fine with yours, mate. You know Trust what, then? If I you. could, I'd definitely, I'd love to swap with any of you guys. Uh, this is, this is terrible. Is it a bit like, you know, when parents, when they're eating something and they don't want their kids to have any, they're like, oh, this is awful. You wouldn't want any of this. Oh, oh, oh it's going to make you sick. Oh, yeah, horrible. Oh. <laughs> That's what it is. Oh, man. crazy right anyway actually that gets us onto our last clip actually perfectly dev great segue there is from episode 47 public pokemon where you dev ran about and you know what why am i going to do the talking i'll let the clip do the talking it's it's gonna make you laugh i um i've been doing a bit of, uh, doing quite a few gigs and stuff yeah and um there was something that happened on the way to one of my gigs that reminded me of something that we've covered on this podcast before yeah i think i spoke i spoke about it with uh with ace so let's not say the guy's name because i always feel a bit out of order that we kind of keep bringing this guy's name up but a couple of years ago there was that's your phone not mine i know for a fact i put mine on silent a couple of years ago there was an incident that happened around new year's eve where uh, a gentleman was videoed having his face straddled by a young lady they were both of legal consent consenting age but i guess the problem is they performed this act out in public on a very busy street in the age of video camera phones so a lot of people took videos of them doing it they were clearly drunk but people uploaded it to the internet and they found out who these people were and some of them one of them lost their jobs or They've sort of become legendary now. You just need to say the name and people... Dominic Celeste. Why have you got to say his name for? The poor guy. Dominic Celeste. Never going to live it down. Not with a C. It's with a C. Not with an S. It's with a C in Never it. Never going to live it down. But I um, 
I remember saying when that incident happened and I saw the footage, I was like, do you know what? If I saw something like that, I wouldn't videotape it. What I'd do is I'd look at it, be like, boy, oh my God, look at these guys getting crazy. And then I'd just carry on. I'm not going to videotape them. I'm not going to upload it to the internet, find out their names. And, you know, they're young people that are allowed to fuck up and make mistakes, you know? And I don't feel like they should be punished for that for all eternity just because... All right, it was a very stupid thing that they did, okay? Most of us are smart enough to know if you want someone to sit on your face, okay, you go somewhere quiet, preferably indoors to mm. go and do it. You don't mm. do it on a busy high street and then expect nothing to happen. But Plus, one slip from the female, the lady that was shredding his face, he was on, like, concrete stairs. What if she slipped and, like, landed on his head wrong? Irresponsible. Imagine killing is. somebody with your pussy like that. That's a bad way to go. Irresponsible. Um... So I was walking. Imagine being the coroner who has to tell the parents of the person that's just been killed how they died. <laughs> how do you say that in a medical way, Dev? How do you use medical well, words to explain that a pussy yeah. broke someone's neck? He slipped on some, some pom pom. So um, anyway, yeah. So I was walking to, <laughs> I was walking to my gig. It yeah. was in uh, Finsbury Square, uh, in the centre of London. It's about half past ten at night. Parked up my car, and I walked around the square. Quite a busy road. Okay. It's, yeah. It's, very very busy road and the, the the pavement is quite wide and then next to the pavement is a green area sort of grass cut very short you know very nice and then there's some railings and then a, a sort of square green area right in the middle yeah and at first i i i, I could hear this sound as I, I walked around the square i could hear the sound like kind of like a, uh, 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 kind of thing going on and i was like oh my god did someone get beat up or now, it turns out, in a way, somebody was. Um, I was looked at ever so slightly to my left, and there's two people just like fucking. Like the guy is missionary. The guy was on top of her, trousers down to like past his knees. She had one leg in off, one leg in off. They were on their, you know, she was on her back, and they were just like, and he was absolutely pile driving. Like he was getting clearance, you know. <laughs> When he was pulling back, he was getting clearance from it. Then, whap, was he getting air, Was he getting airtime? Whap, he's yeah. getting airtime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. So, because it's not, it's not like a mattress. There's no give. You know, when you're on the, when you're on top and you're on like the solid ground, there's no give. So, I made a little video. We're obviously not going to upload this anywhere, but Marcus, I just want to. What what I'd like to do is play the video and then just get some sort of ongoing commentary from you as to as, as, as to what you can okay, see. Okay, so yeah. but I'm going to put the volume up high. Yeah. But yeah. Before I press play, um. I, what I want to stress, because we're not going to show people light. the video. Yeah. What I want to stress to people who can't see this video, I'm not going to upload this. You're not, if you see me out in public, come up to me and say, hey, Dev, can I see that video? I'll go, yeah, sure, no problem. Mm. But I'm, we're not, I'm not going to upload this video anywhere. Uh, what I need to stress to people is how close to the busy road these people are. We're not talking about, they're not tucked away in any bushes or anything anywhere. I want to, Marcus, take note on how you look at the pavement. I s swing the camera around and then they're there. They're at right the start there. of this video, it looks really light anyway. Yeah, it's half past 10 at night on like a Friday. You got a text from Phil. All right, Phil can fuck off for now. Oh, cool. I love Phil, but we're busy. Yo, so, minding my own business, yeah? Bro, look how real it Oh shit, so there's walking down the street. It's bright. And there's, oh my Yo, God. No shame in her. He's outside a test. He's outside no a car park. No shame, bro. No shame, you He said you're following him. Think of the kids. Brexit. This is the Brexit, man. That's real. So, this, so, so those people laughing, by the way, was the people fucking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were the ones who were laughing. So I couldn't, can, can I you, couldn't commentate that while I was watching it because there was too much to take in. Yeah, there was too much taken. So it was a bright enough night already. Yeah. So you got an iphone yeah right i was expecting to see some, i was expecting not to see much grainy, like some grainy dark, image, yeah. it's very bright and i realized the the light that's when you swing the camera around to the right they've managed to find the brightest lightest part of this patch of grass which is lit by a car park sign yeah. which says open yeah 24 <laughs> <Open> 7 <laughs> <laughs> park your car here park your amazing. car here it's so amazing. um can you just watch oh, it one more time it's, it's locked can you can just watch it one more time yeah. just want you to see because i shamed them a bit i like walked up behind them like yeah and he said you're following you're following me that's how out of it they were they thought that they like crept away in some secret little bushes somewhere and they weren't they were like by a very busy street <laughs> um so 
I realized in hindsight, okay, if I'd have been able to do this all over again, I wouldn't have done that. I just, I, I was rambling a bit. Like, I just keep yeah. repeating myself. Like, you oh, you got no shame. You got no shame. Even though, blatantly, I, you know, I, you had a little, no shame. Bit, a little yeah. bit envious. Yeah. So, uh, what I should have done, okay, if I could go back and do this again, is I would have walked up to them, holding the camera in my hand till I got all the way up to them, going, my mind's telling me no. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't do that. Okay, watch this again. This time, I want you to watch the moment that when I call out to them. Okay, watch the guys. Uh, watch the guys' bum cheeks. They clench up. When he <laughs> <laughs> so, no, is he? No. Is he? Does he finish at that point? Like, did I make him come? I think that's when it technically became did a threesome. The shock, like, make him come. Watch. Watch the bum cheeks. Ready? Yo, you like got no shame in that. Oh, he's, he's, I think he's coming. No, I think he's coming. Wait, did you hear the? Oh, wait, there's a. Oh. No, but that's her calling out because she's like, "Oh no, we're getting oh, caught." Oh, I thing. thought I thought that was like no everyone climax. Enough. Yeah, did I make both of them come? I think everybody climax. I think I did. Yo, you like got no shame in that. <laughs> <I did. laughs> that's surely what it is. When I called out, the sound of my voice was so erotic to both of them that they both came instantly, and her leg kicks out of yeah. it as well. You're welcome. But oh my the other gosh. thing is, like, it's, the moment has never taken me so much where I'm like, okay, we need to fuck right here, here on the ground, right now. Like, they did the most difficult position to get caught in. Why didn't they just, you know, there's, there's other positions they could have gone for. Other th that's fully committing. Her trousers, <laughs> his trousers round his ankles. Her, she's got one leg in off. Bruv, everywhere else in this little patch of grass is darker than where they're yeah. lying right now. There's a bunch of bushes around them and they chose to be... I think maybe they wanted to get... You, I just realised that's what it is, you couple of... Yeah. You, yeah, yeah, you wanted, wanted to get caught, didn't you? Open 24 hours a day. We care. You park. <gasps> Boy. Well. Bruv. I feel right. really bad now about that video. I shouldn't have filmed them. It was a really You didn't funny share video. it though. No, you're right. I didn't post it online or anything. I was just, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. You know, it's not like two people doing some heavy petting at the swimming pool or, you know, chewing each other's faces off. They were fucking, fucking on a high street in front of everybody. Couldn't believe I'm it. I'm not. I, I'm not telling you, the listener, to go out there and film people that are doing that. But I feel like in that moment, Dev, you were more documenting how ridiculous this was so that this didn't sound like some ridiculous tale. I, I, I was like, no one's ever going to believe me. I want to tell Marcus on a podcast, oh, yeah, I saw people <laughs> fucking, you're like, well, where's the video? And I go, oh, yeah. I, I was going to, but uh, I didn't want to interrupt, which is lies, actually. I did want to interrupt. I wanted to interrupt what they were doing and I wanted them to feel bad about what they had chosen to do. Bad decision, decisions, guys. So you, see when you were in the episode where you peed in the bottle, right? And you yeah. felt like there were, that you weren't being looked at as much as you probably were. I feel like that couple were totally in the zone. I think they were probably well liquored up. Oh, yeah. yeah. had some stuff. In oh, the yeah, and right, they were right, like, right. shh, no one will notice. We'll just walk over here by three steps off the high road and no one will see us on the floor. Just keep low to the ground and we'll be fine. You know, I've also been in that position where um, someone's wanted to have sex in a public place and I'm like, nah, everyone's going to see or someone's going to see or there's a chance that someone's going to see. I don't even like, I've had this one a few times, you know, you go away and you'll stay in like maybe a high rise hotel or an apartment that has windows that just face out to the city. And you mm. think, well, if, if I can see them lot stood down there, they can look up here and, and, and see me. I just, I, I don't like the idea of people seeing me have sex at all. I don't like the idea of getting caught, being watched, none of that. Hate it. Some of the cuck crew will be into that though. <laughs> Which uh, again, I don't want to take anything away from anybody who is into that stuff. Like fill your boots, man. If that's what you like, then cool. But personally, I can't think of anything worse. I barely have, I can, struggle to concentrate and get into it when it's just me and one other person let alone you know a, a room full of people or half the city glancing at me Ooh. i mean you already answered this before when we spoke about sas who dares wins on a previous episode but i was going to say like would you rather somebody was in the room or saw you like pooping or having Mate, sex i don't know if we covered this on a previous episode but 
for the SAS show, when we showed up to our accommodation, the barracks that they were going to be keeping us at, they pointed to the far end and said, those are the, the latrines, those are the toilets. And they're basically, it's just a box with a hole in it and a door, but the door only goes up to your shoulders. So if I'm sat on that toilet across the other side of the base, you, you can look into my eyes as I'm taking a shit because it doesn't cover that much. And I said in my head, I was like, I have a, I'm going to wait till it's four o'clock in the morning until I go and take a shit because I couldn't bear the thought of doing it in front of everybody or I'm going to hold it in for seven days. I'm going to hold my shit inside me for seven days, which is not a good idea. By the end of the first day, mate, I was sat shoulder to shoulder with a girl on one side, guy on the other side and shitting freely in the breeze, listening to everyone shit around me, looking into each other's faces because you just have to, you just have to get on with it. And there he is. with sex, on the other hand, that's not the case. You don't have to just go there and then, because what's the other option? You don't, there's, there's always another option. I hear that. I mean, do you think that, and this is going to sound a bit sexist still, do you reckon women are a little bit better suited to shitting in front of each other because of the whole, let's go to the toilets together thing. I don't know how that works. If no, you're shitting in I, front of each other. No, I think there's still a, like, I can remember this from school. You don't shit in school. No, you, never. You just don't. Cardinal sin. You just don't. I don't know why. I don't know who made it up or who made it a thing. You do not take a shit in school. I think it's the same for girls as well. I think there's a sort of unspoken thing that if you're going to go to the toilet together, you go for a wee or you go to, uh, sound sexist, like check your makeup or something like that. You don't go, you know, to your mate at dinner. Psst, no. I'm turtle heading pretty bad right now. Do you want to come to the toilet with me? I'm, I'm, I'm about to drop my guts. Like, no, I don't hey. think that. I don't think that happens. <laughs> I think they're just not, as embarrassed yeah. as we are. And nightclub shitting as well. Never. I've, I mean, I've never, well, I'd be lying if I said I never, but it's not like a, something that I'd want to do, bruv. Don't you feel like you've completed some sort of special mission when you do? I feel like being able to shit in a nightclub and pull it off, I think, it's right up there with one of my best achievements. It's like right up there with signing to like BBC Radio One to be able to like <laughs> get in, get the shit done. It's not a horror show. There's not loads of cleanup involved. You know, you've been able to do that thing where you hit the flush as it hits the water so that it doesn't stink up the place too much. The, 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 the seat isn't like half removed off of the <laughs> thing. It's not completely. That's the other key as well. If you are going to shit in a nightclub, do it right at the start. Don't do it at like three o'clock in the morning <laughs> when everyone's just been in there drunk, kissing <laughs> everywhere. Like, let's be honest. Like, when you're drunk and you go to use, uh, not a urinal, but like a natural toilet, you're not pissing in the toilet. You're like, up the walls, <laughs> down the side. I don't give a fuck. I haven't got to clean this shit up. <laughs> yeah, props, man. That's such a special achievement if you've ever done that. If you've ever managed to shit in a nightclub, Get away with it, scot free. Then props to you, man. So many different yeah, ways take, it could go wrong. Yeah, man. Well, I take it you've done it. I don't I, know if I, I reckon oh. I've done it like three times. Like in my in, in all the nightclubs I've been in all my life, I think three times I've been like, yeah, I gotta go for it, man. Otherwise, I'm not gonna be able to enjoy the rest of this night. I might have to be that loser that goes home, you know, and comes back. I do that. I've why. done that before as well. Yeah, like yeah, in, yeah. When, you're, when my hotel is like right next to the club I'm playing at. I will hundred yeah. percent nip back to the room, have a little shit, and then come back. Come back feeling lighter and fresher than ever. Anyway, Dev, we could go on forever <laughs> with the tips that we've got today. <laughs> um, I just want to say, man, like all honesty, bro. Thank you for being part of the show, uh, part of How to Kill an Hour, man. It's really good, like for us as an independently black-owned podcast, to get where we have got to, man, and like to be able to be in the same conversation or the same room as some of these other podcasts is great. And it's nice to just go back through the content that we've got and just see so many, <laughs> see so much fun there is. Like, I mean we get emails from listeners saying that they listen to an episode like recently and then they go back and listen to other ones and they always oh. pick out little bits for us, which kind of helps us get these clips going. And it's kind of like a nice testament to the last five years of how to kill an hour, bro. Well, so thank you is what I'm trying to say. Well, thank you, bro. Like I love doing this show. It's always a pleasure to do this show. So yeah, I always have fun doing it. 
Yeah, man. It's a bit of bants as well. And it's always good to hear about the things that you can discuss here in the podcast. And you couldn't quite discuss on air because I feel like some <laughs> of these things wouldn't quite run on daytime radio. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that's the whole that's the whole thing with these type of mediums, man, is it, uh, it is way better. It is way better to do chats like this because, you know, this is how we talk. Mm. This is how we talk mm. to each other. and mm. Yeah, man. A hundred percent. And it's like the medium's really changed as well over the last few years as well, man. I'm glad to mm-hmm. see there's so much content out there as well. A lot of people got a voice. Yeah. I kind of, you hear people moaning like, eh, everyone's got a podcast. I'm like, listen, unless you were the first person ever to podcast, which I'm probably going to put my money on, you're not. Shut up. Like, I'm happy. I want there to be more podcasts. I want there to be more tech podcasts. I want there to be more podcasts with people that yeah. like us on them as well, man. Yeah. Like, I'd, I'm I'd, ready. I'd, that's like saying... Oh, oh! Everyone's reading books now. Yeah, yeah, like because a thing comes along that people are into, and exactly. I, I hate that idea that there's not enough space for everybody to do what they want. It's such a bollocks, man. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, you might not be as heavy as us, but there's <laughs> no fuck with you. You can do it, man. That's what I kind of <laughs> say to everyone. Fuck it, go for it. Get your shit out there, and then yeah, crack on. Anyway, look, this has been a great episode. There, thank you for joining us. Um, obviously, all of our social medias are at How to Kill an Hour. I am at Marcus Bronzy, M A R C U S B R O N Z Y. Where can we find you, Dev? Uh, I'm just it's Dev on Instagram. D E V Dev. That's where I'm going to be posting all the stuff that I'm doing with these uh, Twitch streams and studio streams. So if you're interested in that, that's where you'll be able to find me. What's the Twitch handle as well? Have you got that locked oh, down yet? Can yeah, you share it's that? Dev's Studio. So D E V S S T U D I O. Dev Studio. And don't forget, if you have an Amazon Prime account, I think you get a free subscription to oh, any yeah, channel. Maybe. So if you've got Amazon yeah. Prime, make sure you do that as well. Um, and then you can give Dev a sub. It's free for you and you can show him some love, man, and support him as a creator. There we go. Nice one. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Plenty of ways to kill some time out there. Thank you for killing some time with us. Bless. And also, before we finish this run of 100 episodes, a massive part of our show is the man that is Funk Butcher. Now, he is so busy at the moment, changing the world. I mean, ever since our episode that we had about Black Lives Matter a few months ago, he's been continuing the conversation online and is now editing together a black mix mag and is doing so much for our community out there. So he's real busy and I'd love to have grabbed him and get him on the show, but he's just doing stuff, which means he can't make the time for us at the moment. But (laughs) before Funk, was out there fighting for justice for us. He was also having some jokes here on How to Kill an Hour, and he will be back soon. This isn't the end of Funk Butcher, but I thought I'd leave you with a clip from an episode called Muhammad I'm Bad. Within that episode, I tell Funk all about a story about brand new, technologically advanced appendages. Did you hear about the bionic dick the first time around? Bionic There's dick? There's an episode called Bionic Balls. Uh, <laughs> it's two-parter, actually, with me and Ace. Um... It's a guy called Mohammed Abad, okay? For those who don't know who he is, he's a 43-year-old Scottish fella who lost his love stick, basically. What? Yeah, his disco Ouch. stick, his purple-headed soldier, his tonsil tickler, tonsil his trouser tick. snake. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You guessed it. His penis. He lost it in a car accident when he was a child. More information about that on the Bionic Bulls episodes, part one and two. Yeah, check all of that out. But ever since <laughs> then, um, he's had no dick. So he's been a virgin. And he got a bionic penis. Yeah. So it's technically a woman. Uh, no, he's a man. Okay, he just lost his. He's like eunuch. <laughs> yeah, lost his, lost his, lost his business. Yeah, I, I, we tried to work out again. Listen yeah. to this episode. We tried to work out how you could lose uh, your penis in a car accident. Didn't really want to think about it, Mike. But we did explore it in in um, the episode bionic balls. Yeah. Like um, but at the moment, Mohammed's new willy get he caught, operates get by caught in the door. Or? Of the car, car, oh yeah, it could be any part of a car accident. Yeah, caught in a door, um, put the wrong thing in a keyhole to turn it on. Yeah, it's like, ah! um, what else? What else could you do? Winding the window up, got caught in the ignition, got caught. What? Yeah, woo, <laughs> woo, woo, <laughs> got fiery. Ignition. Exactly, got fiery. Fresh out, out the, the kitchen. kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Mama's losing the penis. Uh. Yeah, he banged his car. <laughs> What's your Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> sorry, Mohammed. Uh, sorry, Mohammed. Making well, light of your situation. Well, now he's got a he's got a fresh one, isn't he? He's yeah. got his Terminator. You know, he's got his Terminator T one thousand. But now your penis is over nine thousand. Exactly. But that's it, the Dragon Ball Z crew. It, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what? <laughs> he operates it with a button in his nuts, basically, and it, inf- it inflates his willy and deflates it. But um, Mr. Nim, uh, the guy who 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 built his penis, um. He said it will stay up as long as he wants. And when he's had enough, he just switches the off. I've had enough. Don't leave your girl around Muhammad, man. How many men? Yeah. Yeah. How many men would love to just say, I'll just turn it on and off. Don't leave your man around. Don't leave your girl around Mo. True player for real. (laughs) Mo is dangerous. Yeah. But since then, Mo went on match.com. He's been on an Asian dating site as well. Um, he's even tried Tinder, but so far he had no feedback. I, I, last time he spoke about him, someone was going to help him lose his virginity. Um, it was a porn star that said she was going to help him lose his virginity. So he still hasn't lost it, even with this. Exactly, yeah. But he needs to find... I, I think, Well, maybe... Let's have a look. Okay, so he's, he's used his willy now. He's used his penis now, but yeah. now he's looking for love. So he's on Match.com. He's on an Asian dating site. He's on Tinder, but he's had no feedback for love. Bruv, what you need to do is on Tinder and on these dating profiles, Mo, yeah. is not put your face on these, bruv. Yeah, man. You need to put that technical, get me, so, innovation up in there and say, so baby. I, I am the walking rampant rabbit. Yeah, I got a big dick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got one that will stay up forever. Yeah. It operates with a switch. So you don't have to turn me on. I can say, all this, baby, I could, we could spend hours on you. Yeah. Because for d- me, it's We don't it's stop, on. baby. It's on. We don't stop, baby. Yeah. He can go for as long as he wants. Yeah. Oh my gosh, man, Muhammad, you've you've got the to- total package. All you got to do is listen. Yeah. yeah? All you got to do is pay for dinner. Yeah. Open the door. What happened if Muhammad's uh, dick is has got a, the the battery life of an iPhone though? Or the battery life of our recording device. It just <laughs> ran out halfway through. <laughs> if you had an iPhone battery life, um, he d- he better hope he rolls up in that date with <laughs> over ninety percent. You don't you don't want to have a battery. You don't want to have an iPhone battery dick. Yeah. And roll up in a date with 19%. Have to put low power mode on. Yeah. I'm, I'm, my anxiety mm. is is, mm. is going mm. is going haywire at the moment. Go into mm. a date mm. and you mm. haven't charged yourself. Mohammed, you didn't charge mm. yourself before you went on the date. Oh, he's got to roll onto the date. He's got to go, <clears throat> Garcon, Garcon, have you got an iPhone charger? Please? <laughs> you got a plug? Does it go under the table? <laughs> yeah, if it goes under the table, just hook me up, please. I just want to quit. Yeah, don't worry about me. <laughs> the extension Plugged lead in. in the restaurant. Or oh, he's got a little battery pack. He's got a little battery pack that he just puts in his pocket that he just charges himself up with. Them free ones that he sent out for their phones. There you go. Yeah, he's, he's got that. He's got that juice pack. <laughs> that juice pack going. Oh man, I still think it's a bad idea that he's got the switch in his nuts. I think it should be somewhere else, like an app on his phone or somewhere that isn't because during the act of love making, that's when the nuts are most likely to get touched. So she could like on off. You know, on. you know, in the, the Dark Knight, there was this um, it was this kind of bomb. I feel like the, the military have this device and it's, it sends a, a, an electromagnetic pulse. EMP. The EMP. Yeah. So imagine if the EMP went off in the city right now. And everyone's like, okay, how's that going to fit me? I ain't got no electronic moving parts. But Mohammed here. He's messed he'll, up. He's messed up, man. And the only thing you can do when there's a power car mm. and an EMP is what else you do? Hey, baby, there's no lights. Yeah. We ain't going to work tomorrow because we can blame everything on a power car. Hit the yeah. generator. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> So he's got a generator. Get the generator. Oh, Let's get Mo. some emergency power in here. Mo, let us know. Mo, contact us, please. How to kill an hour. Let yeah. us know. How do you power that penis? Yeah. If you know, let us, please. I'm, I'm curious as I power that penis. I don't know why he's struggling to find love because he's got the icebreaker of all icebreakers. Hi, I'm Mo. I have an electrical dick. But the thing Tell is... Tell me something interesting about you. Do you know what it, uh, I'm, I'm learning? From, from a, a combination of Mo's story and your, your recent court case earlier on, it's that... It doesn't matter if you've got the, the, the penis over 9,000. Women just want a bad guy. See, if Mo was, was an evil genius and he had, a, and he had a, a metallic penis, yeah, the ladies would be cool over, they'll be in his DMs, they'll be in his Instagram posts. So Mo needs to vilify himself. Yeah, boy. So he needs to have like a, a villain's name, yeah. which alludes to the fact that he's got an a angry, angry penis, an a, a, a electronical penis. So you know like how you had Mr. Freeze, yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, the Riddler. Yeah. How about this? Batman. Yeah. What would he be called? We've got to give it, it's Mah- got to be a Batman. Theme. Mohammed's name is Mohammed Abad. But yeah. if he changes to Mohammed Umbad. Yo. Mohammed Umbad. Mohammed Umbad. And draw, and draw, and get one of your lady friends to draw on some dastardly eyebrows. You know the ladies that always draw yeah. in their eyebrows and wash them off at night, yeah? Yeah. Get one of your friends. <laughs> 
<laughs> you're supposed to draw in some arched eyebrows. Yeah, yeah. Mohammed Ambad, Mohammed 42, Ambad, yeah. metallic penis over 9,000. Or, or he needs to roll with like a, a crew of, of all female, like, um, you know, like they have psychics. What are like even now? They're not. Are they stooge? What are the psychics called for evil? Is it a psychic? Are evil? Do evil people have psychics? Hench women. Hench, hench women. Yeah. Hench women, but all of them roll in wheelchairs. Oh my god. <laughs> Mohammed, you listening? Mohammed, I'm bad. Mohammed, I'm rolls bad. Rolls with a crew of hench women, <laughs> all of them in wheelchairs. <laughs> he wouldn't even have to say why. He wouldn't even have to say why. He just roll up in the play and be like, have you, I, think, I don't know who that is. Well, I don't know, but that looks like that's Muhammad. I'm bad. He's he, bad. He looks have you, bad. Have you heard about it? Once you go bad, you end up in a wheelchair. <laughs> Real talk, Muhammad. We, Muhammad, if you need get how to kill an owl with another innovation, another one, another one. Thank you very much, Muhammad. You're welcome. Uh, you will find love. Just be a bad boy. <laughs> roll with a group of people. Hire some people. It's like um, you can hire crowds, can't you? Rent a crowd. Yeah. All of them in wheelchairs. Roll. There you go. So there you have it. That's our run of 100 shows. We said we'd save the 100th episode for something special. And I just want to say thanks again to everybody involved in How to Kill an Hour. Obviously, Billy, uh, my right-hand man producer out here. Also, Funk Butcher, Dev, Ace, and Nick Bright, and all the other people that have contributed, whether you've been guests for one-off shows or whether you've had conversations with us about tech and future content. And obviously, most importantly, we'd like to say thank you to you, the listener, because basically, without you, How to Kill an Hour would not be where it is now. So thank you. Please keep listening. Please keep telling your friends all about us. We're so proud that we got ourselves a gong at the British Podcast Awards. We are one of the few independently owned companies out there, podcast producers out there, who managed to pick up some traction there amongst the judges, amongst the kind of crowds that follow it, and it's something that we'd love to replicate in the future. But in the moment, we're just going to bask in our vibiness. All right. In the meantime, in between time, there's plenty of ways to kill some time out there. Thank you for killing some time with us. 